Hello everyone, today let's talk about solving this quadratic equation by completing the square. I know that for this quadratic equation, we can simply just factor it or use the quadratic formula and then we can figure out the answer quickly. And it's really because we have a really nice expression on the left side and so factoring it will be the fastest way. But if we want to learn the idea of completing the square, then we can actually try it on a simple equation. Okay, so we can we can try and see what the process looks like. Okay, so first we are going to write down the ABC because for a quadratic equation, okay, so let's just look at the standard form for a quadratic equation. We have AX squared plus BX and then plus C is equal to zero, okay? So you can see that the number in front of the X squared is A and then the number in front of the X is B and then the constant term is the C, okay? So now what really happens is that for our quadratic equation, a is equal to 1, and then B is equal to negative 4. Now, B is not positive 4, it's negative 4. We need to make sure to include the sign. As you can see here, we only put a plus here because we can allow B to be a negative number. So if B is a negative number, then it will be adding a negative number, which is the same thing as the subtraction. Okay, so C is equal to 3. Okay, now we are actually ready to do the completing the square. The way that we do it, okay, is that we are going to start with the x square, and then we have the 4x on this side. So we got to keep the quadratic term, which has the square, and then the linear term, which has just x to the power of 1. And then what about the constant term? We move it to the other side of the equation. So if we move it, then we subtract 3 from both sides, so we get negative 3. Okay, you can see that I put some space over here because we need to think about what to fill in in here. Now, what we're going to do, okay, so we can do this calculation on the side. We can take this B, okay, we take the B, and then what we're going to do is that we are going to divide by 2, okay, and then what happened is that we are going to square this. And this is what we need to add to both sides of the equation. Okay, and then you may say, what, uh, what is that? Well, let's take a look at this. We have b. b is negative 4, so we put in the negative 4. And then divide by 2, right? And then we have the square. And then what do we get here? Negative 4 divided by 2, so we get negative 2. And then we have the square. And then square the negative number, so we are going to get a positive number, which is positive 4 in this case. Okay, this is what we need to add to both sides of the equation. So we are going to get plus 4 and then plus 4. It's actually that simple. So it's really just taking the b, dividing by 2, and then squaring that quantity. And then that, whatever that we are getting, okay, that's what we are adding to both sides of the equation. And then now once we do that, then this becomes a perfect square. And this becomes a perfect square so we can put it in the factor form. And then you may say, how do we put it in the factor form? Well, if we put it in the factor form, then it's going to be quantity square over here, right? And then now, what is that? It will be x for sure, right? Because x squared, and then we get the x squared. And then what about this over here? Well, this over here is going to be what? Now, there is a nice trick here that you can uh, use so that you don't need to think too hard on factoring this uh, expression over here. We can still factor it. I'm going to show you in a minute. But if we just take a look at whatever that's inside, okay, so let's look at the inside. This number, this inside number without the square, okay, this inside number is the one that we are going to put here. So we get minus 2. Okay. So the right side is easy. We just do the calculation. 4 minus 3 is going to be 1. Now, as I said uh, earlier that I'm going to show you how to factor this one. So um, we already figured out the factorization is this one. But we want to see what's going on with the factorization. And then you may say, how do we do this? Okay, so first we have 1x and then times 1x. You can see that 1x times 1x will give us 1x squared. So we have that. And then the 4, we have two choices. We can either do 1, 4 or we can do 2, 2. But you can see that if you do 1x and 1x and then 1, 4 over here, then we are going to get what? 1x and then the other one is 5x. This cannot really give us the negative 4. It's really because when you are 
having um, negative 4, you need to put a minus sign here, minus sign here. But the problem is that we have positive 4, so we need them to have the same sign, okay? So that is actually not going to work. So that means we are going to try the 2 and the 2. So now we draw the arrows. And so we are going to get uh, 2x and then 2x over here, okay? Now because we want negative 4x, so that means both will have a negative sign, okay? Both will have a negative sign. And will it work? Yes, this time it will work because if we have negative 2x and plus negative 2x, we get negative 4x. And then we want a positive 4, so they should have the same signs. And because we add some negative signs over here to in order for us to get the negative signs, we actually need to have negative signs here because it's 1x times negative 2 so that we can get negative 2x. We cannot just leave it as positive because that will give us positive 2x. Okay, so you can see that the factorization in this case is that we just read across. We have x minus 2 as one factor, and the other one is also x minus 2. And see that if you multiply them together, okay, then what happens? Then we get x minus 2 squared, okay? So that's how we can get that. But as I show you, the trick is that we look at this inside number, and that's what you put here, and that we can just figure out that answer really quickly. Okay, now uh, the rest is really uh, simple. Because we have a square and the square is isolated, we can actually take the square root on both sides. Okay, so I'm going to write this step. When we take the square root on both sides of the equation, make sure that put the plus or minus over here. Don't forget, right? So we are going to have the plus or minus square root of 1. And of course, that is easy because square root of 1 is 1. And see that here we have the square and the square root they cancel out. So we get x minus 2. And then we already, generally, we should have absolute value, but we already put the plus or minus here, so we don't need to worry about that anymore. So we are going to get plus or minus 1. Now, in order for us to find the answer, we need to split this into two cases because we have basically 1 or negative 1. That is equal to the x minus 2. So two cases. We can break it as case 1, okay? So x minus 2 is equal to positive 1, okay? And then we can, of course, simply just quickly find the answer. x is equal to 3 because 3 minus 2 gives us the 1. So that is one answer. What about the other one? Case 2 is that when we have x minus 2 is equal to negative 1. And then we can add 2 to both sides. So adding 2 to both sides, we get negative 1 plus 2. So we get positive 1. And you can step. Uh, just quickly check 1 minus 2 we get negative 1 so that is the second answer okay so that is basically this whole process for completing the square and then of course you may be wondering why we can simply just like take the b and then divide by 2 and then we square it and then that's what we need to add to both sides of the equation. It's really because when we um, when we complete the square, we try to make it a perfect square, which will look like this. And then if we just multiply this out, and then we will understand why we're why that will work. So let's just use this one as an example, and then try to understand it from here. So we have x minus two squared, right? So let's. This is not part of the solution anymore. I'm just going to write it down over here. So x minus two squared. Let's just take a look at this here. And remember that let's just we call that there is a formula that we have. So when we when we have this a plus b actually let's use a minus b because we have the minus sign over here so let's just use a minus b okay and then quantity squared and remember that there was the um, there was the formula for us to to do this quickly instead of writing two copies of the a minus b and then foil that right so we actually will have a square and then minus 2ab and then plus b square Okay, so what really happens is that if we multiply this out, then we are going to get square the first one because this this x is the a, as you can see, and this is the this is the b, and so if we square the x a square, right? So we get x square, okay, and then minus two times a a is x, and then two times a and b b is what two. And then you may say, what about b 
um, what how should B be a negative number? You can think of it that way, but you can also just treat B as a positive number. So we put the minus sign over here. And as you can see that we are treating B as a positive two. And then there is still the negative sign here, which will show up over here when we do the calculation. And then we are going to get what? The B square. So square the two. So we are going to get two square. Okay. You can see what's going on over here. So we are going to simplify this. So we get X squared minus two times two, we get four X and then plus the four. So see that that's how we're getting the, um, you can see that we are getting the four. So that's why we have that expression, okay? But that still doesn't show why uh, taking the b, the lowercase b, okay, and then divided by two and then scoring it will work. Okay, the reason is this. Because if we just look back in, um, in this, then you can see that this is a square. Okay, actually, let me put parentheses. So a quantity square. In this one, as you can see that we have seen it earlier, so it will be minus two, and then a, and then b, right? And then there was still the, this one is the b square. And so if we just look at the a, a is the x in this case, okay? And then so this is x, and then this is uh, x over here. We don't know what the b is. Okay, we don't know what the, uh, assuming that we don't know this, this positive four, so we have no idea what the b is. But we really just have the x squared minus the two x, and then there was a b, okay? And then let's say we try to figure out what to add to both sides of the equation, like in the earlier example. But if you just take a look at the, whatever that we have here, we have negative four x, that's already given to us. Okay, so that is already given to us. And then if you just come back here and then take a look at it, we have the what? We have the negative 4x, and then that we have the uh, the negative 2x. In order for us to figure out the b, then we are really just l reversing the process. So we are comparing this negative 4x over here and then this negative 2x and then b. And then of course you can see that they both have an X in it, so we don't need to worry about that, okay? And then now what really happens is that we can try to just match the negative B, uh, negative two B and then negative four. So if you just combine them together, you put them together, right? So we really have the negative two, or well, actually they both have negative signs, so we can also omit the negative. So we are gonna get the two B. So simply just look at the two B and then, match it with the four, is that okay? And then so what What are we doing over here? So we have the B, and then what do we get? Take the four divided by two. So we get the four divided by two. And then of course we get the two. And do you see what's going on over here? We were dividing by two to figure out the B. And that is what? And then of course, um, we take the lowercase b, okay, dividing by two. And as you can see that we are taking the four, which is in this case, it's actually the lowercase b, but of course we omitted the signs because we already have the same signs over here. But of course, at this point, we need to take care of the signs. So we need to include the negative sign over here, okay? And then we divide by two and then we square it. And then why do we need to square it? It's because when we put down this last constant turn over here, we are putting down B squared. We're not just putting down capital B. It will be capital B squared. So that's why we need to square this number. And in fact, whether this is positive or negative doesn't really matter here when you put down the last term because once you square it, it becomes positive. And of course, it's really important that we still take the uh the sign with us for the lowercase b because um we, if we want to use this trick whatever insight does matter because it will affect the sign over here is that okay so that's why the completing of the square process works okay so that's it for this problem. I will show more examples of completing the square uh, next time. Thank you for watching. I will see you.